Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Tuesday now, the 28th day of May 2024. Time for the hurricane outlook and discussion. Pretty short one today. Going to go over pretty much one topic. Yeah, we'll look at severe weather when we're done because that continues to be just plaguing parts of our country. But the main thing today, we do have a pretty robust tropical wave out there. And I think it's interesting because it is possibly a sign of what is coming. We have been told we're going to have a very busy hurricane season. So you start to look for these clues that are out there. Even in May, will that actually happen? And we can see those clues through a variety of tools. And one of those is, of course, satellite. And then the other one is through model analysis and other things. And I'll show you that as we go through today's outlook. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Here we go. First, National Hurricane Center homepage. Nothing in the next two to seven days in the Atlantic Basin, and the same is true for the Eastern Pacific. So that's interesting. We will go all through the month of May with nothing in the East Pack. Usually that is a sign that that's going to be a down year, and we'll see how far into June we get before something develops in the Eastern Pacific. Normally the Eastern Pacific is more active than the Atlantic Basin, so just something to note there. All right, broad satellite view here. Again, strong upper-level winds, very evident here from the clouds being sort of pulled apart like cotton candy, and lots of wind shear even over, of course, off the coast of the U.S. in the subtropics. And uh, some stable dry air out here. You can tell by just the way the satellite imagery looks, the Saharan air layer out there, and then even some strong upper-level winds. I'll kind of highlight that in green here. Um, going the opposite direction of where you would want to see if you are looking for tropical development. Why I say that? Well, these systems come off, these tropical waves. There's one right in here, and they're moving westward. And when the upper-level winds cut across them, I didn't mean to come back on. I wanted to do that. When the upper-level winds cut across them like this, as an example, you get shear. It's that shearing mechanism, you know, the change of wind direction with height. And, of course, out in the tropical Atlantic right now, it's also pretty dry with the Saharan air layer, so generally pretty hostile overall. However... There is that one area down here. This is the tropical wave right in here. And that's pretty robust for the month of May. Deep convection down here, uh, south of 10 degrees latitude. But it is there, that pocket of energy that as we go through into June and into July, and especially August, September, these will have to really be watched. All right, But nothing will come of it, it doesn't look like right now. Maybe some more energy over here. And I think there's a tropical wave buried in this mess, maybe right in here as well. But this one out on the eastern Atlantic, pretty darn robust for the month of May. What is really neat is you can see it on the modeling. This is 850 millibars in the atmosphere. You can see that right there, 5,000 feet. There's the tropical wave there. And you can also see it as you go up into the atmosphere. Remember the atmosphere is made up of layers. There's 700 millibars. And uh, you might argue that it's even more robust there. And how about 500 millibars? That would show that it's pretty stout. And for this, you have to go to the upper dynamics. And here we go here. No, not much reflection of it. Just a little bit of a bending in some of these wind barbs in here. A little bit of vorticity or energy in there. But it's really that lower part of the atmosphere, 700 to 850 millibars, that the tropical wave is most prevalent. And once we get into the hurricane season, you'll see these come off, and you'll see that they start to bundle in the modeling as they move west, and then they try to develop. The other thing that we can look at, too, that really helps to see it is the uh, relative humidity. Oh, yeah, lots of energy there, water vapor, you know, uh, the latent heat. That's energy, basically. Um, and there it is, pretty prevalent there in the precipitation uh, that would be falling underneath it, of course, and even in this field here of the 700 to 300 millibar relative humidity, easy to spot. And we'll be able to watch these come off of Africa as time marches on. But nothing is really going to become of this. In fact, I can prove that to you. Let's scroll this out over the next several days, and you can see it moves along. Lots of deep moisture down here, that's for sure. Lots of humidity, but it's generally squashed to the far south area here of the Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic south of 10 latitude, as I mentioned, uh, and really nothing over the next couple of weeks or so. Just too much in the way of strong upper-level winds. But the tropical wave train is active already, and it's only the latter part of May, something we will want to be watching in the weeks and months ahead, and of course we will. 
And when we do get something to track, uh, you can get our tracking map. I have bundled a bunch of these up. Actually, they're right here. I'll prove it to you. This is just a sampling of the ones. I can't flip it around because you'll see the addresses of the people, and we don't want to give that away. But people have been ordering them. It really means a lot to me because this is a wonderful art form that I think has been lost because we track on our smartphones and on computer apps and whatnot. And those are great, but there's just something special about plotting these things yourself on a piece of paper and in this case it's a nice full color 18 by 24 tracking poster I designed it myself many moons ago as part of when I started my career and I print these up and we give them to some of our patrons on the $25 level it's included with that but I gotta print so many of them to make the run worthwhile that I always have several dozen left over and I figure I'll sell those to the general public why hoard them and why just throw them away so if you want to get one, by all means, I invite you to do so. 20 bucks plus $3 shipping and handling. I fold them up, send them in those envelopes I showed you, and you go to hurricanetrack.com slash track map. You see it right there. I'll put the link in the description for today. All right, before I let you go, yep, severe weather still. I mean, did you see what happened in the Dallas-Fort Worth area yesterday? Yikes. Yeah, severe weather still very prevalent. This is the area for today. Hail. Yikes, right there. I wish I was out there. You know, we got our hail project, but I do, I do have to spend some time at home. we got work to do here, family, and so forth, right? I'll be getting back out there soon enough. The wind, downburst winds. Uh-oh, Houston area, be on the lookout. You saw that one derecho. And then there will be a few tornadoes probably in parts of West Texas tomorrow, starting in the high plains, parts of the front range of the Rockies, general thunderstorms elsewhere where you see the green. And then by day three, back over here except on this day I know I can't go down there because I will be in New York City meeting with our friends at Fox Weather we're working on a few projects so I'll be flying up to New York tomorrow spending the day Thursday there at the Fox Weather headquarters and then back home Thursday night and then we'll start you know basically looking into June for tropical activity and more severe weather as we continue our work to study hail a very destructive and uh, expensive part of severe weather that I think needs to be talked about more and more, so we're doing something about it. But we'll talk about that in another edition, all right? All right, I know this says May 27th down here. I forgot to update it to May 28th, so there it is now. hoo <laughs> I'll at least change the thumbnail that goes on the YouTube upload. Anyway, thanks for tuning in from all of us at Hurricane Track. I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll be back with another update for you tomorrow.